Tony Ferris here. All right, here we go. We are on our way to tactic number 16. We're just passing the halfway point right now. Actually, we're not even there, but uh, what I wanted to do in, in, this, in this quick short lesson is I wanted to give you a little bonus, and, and that's just breaking down a few paradigms that I've had along the way when I, when I got started. So uh, number one, we're gonna, gonna get in, we're gonna get into calculated offers uh, and or letter of intent to purchase. That's what LOI stands for. So with that said, let's, let's hop right into the bonus for you really quick. Um, this literally held me back for a decade when I got started investing in the business. I, so here, here I live in Southern California. Uh, I know that mobile home parks are phenomenal. I know that they're a great investment. And I started to look on online at, at mobile home parks and you know, much to my surprise, literally they're $5 million and um, what a huge paradigm. So I pretty much closed my computer and uh, and did nothing. I, I did some single family and whatnot, but again, I wanted you to really, I wanted to share this bonus lesson with you for you to really know, break down those paradigms. And if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Uh, you're watching this here, uh, so you want, you're in the right place. You want to learn, you want to grow. Uh, I get it. it, it can be a little bit fearful, but um, we're going to get into, um, we're, we're going to delve deeper into kind of how to how to debunk and how to break down those paradigms as well. Okay, what I'm going to give you right now is, it's called Secret Guide to Market Cheat Sheets, and I also offer this in my Jumpstart Kit as well. Uh, so if, you, if you've purchased the Jumpstart Kit, then you have the physical version of this. I'm going to be giving you the digital version. So what's great about this is you can literally assess um, every single market in the U.S. You're going to know what's the population, what's the job growth, what's the crime rate, are big box retailers such as Walmart, are they in the area, um, how about the population, is it decreasing? Uh, so there's a lot of value. You're literally going to thumb to the state and then you're going to scroll down and you're going to find the city and then right there you're going to have all the columns with the pertinent information for you. And again, another thing that I wanted to give you is the population reference guide. This is the one that really takes a deep dive on the population of pretty much every single um, top city. Uh, so you've got thousands upon thousands of cities where you can just have this um, just at quick access. And again, on the uh, on the cheat sheet uh, physical version uh, on the Jumpstart Kit, you've got the uh, the physical one that has the spiral bound as as seen here. Uh, Okay, so what we're going to get into in, in this quick bonus prior to getting into uh, calculated offers is not all cap rates are created equal. Here's what I mean. So those stars right there, those are the parks that, that we currently have. Um, as you can see, they're pretty much, uh, for the most part, on the Bible Belt states. But what I wanted to get into is, as you can see here, this is kind of, this red, this red circle is pretty much the sweet spot, if you will, when it comes to investing in mobile home parks. We were able to just get a deal uh, on the one up there in Idaho, and then uh, down there you can see we've got one in Arizona as well. Uh, again, they're just huge value-add parks and um, able to score a great deal. The first one in Idaho, um, I, I don't want to say it was the best deal. It was $18,000 per door. That was our very first park. And uh, again, my limiting beliefs at the time was I had to I had to be able to drive there. So as you can see, that's that's it's a 13-hour drive, but... Um, when you get into the Bible Belt states, so you start to get a lot higher cap rates. Again, what I wanted to share with you in this bonus is your guide to market cap rate. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna thumb through the guide and what it's gonna show you, what my team and I, we've been tracking, which is super cool, is we'd go online and we'd find all the mobile home parks that have been for sale for the last year. And then what we do is we put those parks inside of here uh, not for the reason that they're even going to be for sale right now, but just to give you a quick handle on what the asking price of mobile home parks are in that geographic area. So if you're interested in uh, you know, certain parts of Tennessee, thumb through the guide and see what parks have gone for in the past in terms of market cap rates. Okay, and again, California, this is what held me back. This is my biggest paradigm, 5%. Uh, and then you take another state like Kentucky, Market cap rates may be north. You can still find parks out there for 15% cap rate, but you're not going to do that really in California uh, unless if you mailed it mailed to an owner and um, they really didn't know the value of the park. Uh, okay, so again, this is what your guide's going to look like. You're going to see Alabama, um, North Dakota, 
And as you can see, Alabama right here, you've got um, Northgate Mobile Home Park, 10% uh, cap rate. You got another mobile home park, 9% cap rate. And then when you scroll down to North Dakota, um, you, you may have some parks that, at a lower cap rate, 6%. So take the time, definitely go through this. This is just a few gifts that I wanted to give you. Okay, so now we're going to get into uh, tactic number seven, calculated offers, uh, letter of intent. We just completed the bonus. I hope I was able to add some value and, uh, and give you some good free downloads as well. Make sure to download those at the end of the video in addition. Uh, okay, so before you begin, here's the thing is, is, is know the area. I talk to investors about this all the time. You, you definitely want to make sure that it's an area that you're, you're willing to invest in. So do this. Take your, take your market guide cheat sheet, pull up the area, see what the population is, make sure there's job growth, um, you know, make sure the big box retailers are there, uh, make sure it's a lower unemployment. So again, what you don't want to do is you don't want to do a calculated offer and come to find out that the owner's willing to sell. And this has happened to me so many times in the business and you're just not able to do the deal simply because not that the numbers don't work, but the area doesn't work. So again, be mindful. Is this an area where you'd want to acquire a park? Uh, okay. And then number two, uh, before we get into that, doing a calculated offer, it's going to cost a little bit more money than it is to simply send out a postcard. So what you want to do is you definitely want to make sure that you have the correct owner's address. Uh, to do that, you can go on the county assessor's website and you can look up the GIS maps. I've got some great training videos for you on that as well. And the GIS maps, that's going to show you, those are internal property records from, from the county assessor. And those are exactly where the, uh, the, the taxes are mailed to, pertinent documents that, that the county needs to send out. Maybe it's renewals, um, you know, maybe it's um, just, just a reminder of your taxes are due. So that's where you're going to target the owner. And again, what I'll do is I'll have my team member, um, you know, verify that that's the correct address. And I'll even call the manager. Um, say you, you, you wanted to, you're advertising solar or, or something along those lines. That's another way to do it, uh, just to make sure that you have the, the correct address. Or maybe you, you have um, uh, a home business and you offer painting or cleaning. So there's a lot of different ways to find the numbers. What I do, though, is I'll go on the county assessor. Uh, and then if, if your team is calling and uh, talking to the manager, have them extract as much information as they possibly can. One of the things that I like to do is, say you call the manager and you wanna be very, you wanna be very cognizant, very calculated, and, and very intentional in your conversation. And here's what I mean is, uh, maybe you do, maybe you say, hey, you know what, um, my grandma's living in a current park right now and she's not happy. Um, I was gonna have her come by, but I wanted to just kinda make sure that you guys had any space available. So then what you do is, is you zip your lip and let the manager talk. Oh yeah, you know, we, we actually do. We've got four or five spaces available. So with that said, um, you can zoom in. There's a lot of different ways to find the size of the park. Number one, you can Google it. You can find a lot of information on Google. Um, you've, I've got my spreadsheets as well. I don't have all the park sizes on there, um, but if you're interested in those spreadsheets, I definitely have those for you as well. Um, another thing you can do is go on Google Earth and zoom in, put it on satellite, and then you can pretty much quite literally count all of the homes uh, on the park as well. And again, as you're talking to the manager, let them do the talking. Um, you know, maybe you ask them, hey, um, you know, how, how, about, um, how about the water? Do you, does, would my grandma have to pay for the water or would I pay for the water? And then again, let them talk. So while they're talking, you're taking diligent notes. And what you're doing is all this information is going to give you the basis of uh, essentially doing a calculated offer. So again, you've asked for water and sewer. Um, you, you, they might not want to give you how many occupied lots. That might kind of blow the conversation, if you will, meaning, um, you know, hey, who is this person on the phone? So what you do is, is you'd, re you'd reverse engineer it. Um, you know, say they've got four, say they've got two empty homes available and they have six empty spots. So what you do is, is you just take that from the total uh, reverse calculate it and get your number that way. And again, the, the numbers may likely be off and, and a letter of intent, just it, the word implies what it says, intent to purchase. And your offer is based upon this current information. Uh, okay. So cap rate equals 
NOI, net operating income divided by purchase price. And we're going to get into this as well. Now, let's say that the lot rent on a given park is $200. And uh, occupied tenant owned home, say you have 20. So then let's just do some simple numbers here. Lot rent, $200, multiplied by 20 residents equals $4,000 a month. Now, let's take that $4,000 a month and we multiply it by a year. Um, per pretty simple. So you've got your lot rent, multiply it by the number of residents, you've got your monthly total, and you take your monthly total and you just simply annualize it. So here we've got $48,000. Now, this is an on average number of, of every single part that we've acquired. Um, it definitely varies. Uh, you, you don't know if you've got a water leak, uh, you don't know if there's some residents wasting water, but, but this is pretty much just a basis to get you to um, some, some educated, calculated offers, if you will. Now, if the park pays for water and sewer, it's typically in, in the 40% 40, 40 expense ratio. I've seen lower and I've seen higher. Uh, water, that, that's going to be a, one of your biggest bills other than your mortgage. So as a park owner, you definitely want to get in there, add water meters, add value to the residents, and then pass that water off to, uh, to your residents. Now, on the flip side, if the residents currently pay for the water and sewer, it's a lot lower. And as, as you can see, you're in the, the lower 30% expense ratio. Now, you've got a link down below here. This is just a really good, um, a really good link to, to help you with um, just basically online tools. There's a lot of really great online forms as well. Um, you just even type in cap rate calculator. Uh, capital investment, so here you go. This is kind of what I was talking about when we were getting into the addresses is it's gonna cost you a little bit more money. You wanna do a, a higher level envelope. Um, thicker paper and just really set yourself apart. You don't want to do cheap printer paper. I do something heavier stock, maybe light gray that shows that you're really you're really serious about this. And you also want to not fold it up and put it in you know a, a forty cent stamp, um, but rather do it first class. Uh, take your time to set yourself apart from the competition. And again, there's not a lot of your competition that are doing this as well. Uh, why not mail it? Again, it's if I'm gonna get something and just something cheesy and basic um, that's folded up with just that looks generic, I'm probably just gonna toss it. I'm gonna know that you know this guy's probably doing this to everybody, so um, I, I might not hold a lot more weight in it than I would with something um, a bit more professional. Now, what I do is hone in. You're, you're razor focused on your area. I would pick ten or twenty parks that you really like. Uh, lots of upside potential. Maybe as you're talking to the managers, you find out that the lot rent's $200, but guess what? The market lot rents in the area is $400, meaning that there's a lot of upside potential. Um, again, if parks are highly, highly mismanaged, you can get in there and, um, and just pretty much add some value, clean it up, get your rent collections up, and, um, and then bump up the rents as well. Now, Again, what type of offer do you make? So depending on the market, you need to find out, take your market cap rate guidebook, but 10 to 12%, that's pretty much a, a going cap rate. So maybe you make your offer at a 12% cap. And again, if they accept, you're, you still got to do your due diligence. This is, this is just an intent to purchase. Uh, and mind you, say you make an offer at, at $500,000, but you, you find out that there's four or five less less homes that are that are occupied. Again, many times I can tell you from, from my past experience is the, the price that we have the park in contract for, it's not the actual closing price. Meaning that stuff pretty much always comes to the surface that you find. Not that a lot of it's a big deal, but if, if a resident's not telling the truth about two residents, um, you know, that could drop the value of a park by close to $30,000. And again, a letter of intent is simply a letter of intent, intent to purchase. Uh, and here, here's this is a good one. So, one once you once you mail the letter, what what are what's the seller going to think? It's going to be, I cannot believe somebody insulted me this much and wanted to offer me only only two hundred thousand dollars for my park when it's damn well worth five hundred thousand dollars. So, um, again, this is a good thing. This is gonna. Yeah, it may piss them off, but that's just part of it. What you want to do is, is they're going to be 
how dare this person? They're gonna, they're just gonna want to call you and be like, are you serious? So what you're doing is, yeah, have them call you, listen, figure out their wants, their needs, their desires, and 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 what they're looking for, and and build build relationship, build a conversation on that. And again, if the park is worth five hundred, maybe maybe you do pay them a little bit more, but you need to really get some detailed information. And then secondly, they may be, holy smokes, I had no idea. Um, you know, I bought the park for $45,000 20 years ago, and, and this person wants to offer me nearly a quarter million dollars. That's absolutely awesome. So again, be highly calculated as we wind down on this video. Uh, be strategic. Definitely make sure it's an area that you're interested in, in buying. Uh, definitely make sure that it, that it looks like a great park uh, based upon all the numbers uh, from you talking to the manager. And again, you want to call other parks in the area as well, see what their occupancy rates are. If, if, all, if other parks in the area, their occupancy rates are really low, 50%, then you might want to just completely pass on the area. But if you call parks in the area and they're pretty much 100% occupied, and then here you've got this little park that's that's 85% occupied. So now you've got some um, you've got some value add. You've got some growth, and, and maybe the rents again are under market. So that's what I would do. Again, stick to 10 or 20 uh, parks and areas. Uh, this is a really this is a really great strategy uh, when it comes to creating relationships with sellers and um, and sparking the relationship, if you will. There's not a lot of players out there, so I highly consider it. And this is gonna conclude this video, and we've got a lot more to come in tactic number eight. I'm gonna to talk to you soon, have a great one.